maybe by the second liquor drink I'll get a little louder. There you go. The That's second one? Hoping. Where's it at? <laughs> you hold out? It's in the truck. <laughs> this sounds a little different from what y'all do. This noise right here. That sounds a little different than y'all don't. Pavement racing there. Damn. David, yeah, so David, uh, that's uh, Smith Motors of Anderson pulling that's right. pulling one out for us and getting you in the studio. We appreciate you coming in. Bad props to David. Yeah, well, he um, promised me plenty of bush light and Canadian club. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> if he don't come through, you let us know. Yeah. Right. We got you. We'll make it happen. Um, so what you been up to? Nothing. No, nah, no, nah, just uh, going around in circles every now and then. That's yeah, about it. every and, now and then. Uh, then when I get a break, I get to go home and. Uh, Really do some work. Do you? You busier at home than you are on the road? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I got a, I got a great bunch of guys on the road with me, so uh, I get to take a little break once I get home, unless things get hectic. But um, yeah, just uh, enjoying life right now. Everything's going good. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you've been racing uh, for a long time now. Um, nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one is what we saw earlier today. Yeah. Um, what got you started? Did your did your dad race, grandpa race, or? Uh, yeah, um, all of the above, pretty much. Um, my dad raced. Uh, my grandpa owned cars for up until probably just four or five years ago, and uh, ever since, I, I'm not really sure how long, but it was well over 50, 60 years he owned cars. And my dad raced, uh, and um, I just was at the racetrack ever since I was um, pretty much born. You know. They, They'd carry me there, and uh, then when I got able to walk, um, Dad stuck a grease rag in my pocket, and I'd walk around with it touching the ground, and um, <laughs> I always wanted to, to go race, so uh, they, they could uh, leave me, and uh, I could hear the trailer rattling going out the driveway, and of course, I don't remember, but my Mom said I'd be screaming, you know, at the door wanting to go, so uh, I guess it's just uh, born into me. Yeah. The races are up to 50, you won the million this year uh how many times have you won at eldora now i won the world five times um i got given the dream one time we uh we won the intercontinental classic and then the uh, uh the million so uh, that, that's the biggest race and then they've been a lot of prelims and things like that but that's the the, the major races anyway wow so they got your picture up all over that place i'm sure if you won that many times it's probably in the media center it's uh <laughs> it's out front it's all over that's pretty cool got a little statue of him out front yeah <laughs> that's next year all right <laughs> not quite yet no. not quite yet <laughs> not quite yet moyer still got more worlds and scott's got way more dreams than i got and me and me and donnie are are tied on on the millions obviously because they've only been two so um it, it was it's funny after after I won a million, you know, we we actually raced the dream the next day, and so he he come up to me and I I, I didn't know this, but at that time I'd won four worlds, uh, one dream, then I won a million. Well, that was Donnie's saying he he'd won four worlds, one dream, then he won a million also. Oh wow, that was kind of, that was kind of cool. That is cool. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I was also reading where you, your uh, your most wanted win was the Knoxville uh, Late Mile Nationals, and congratulations, you won it this uh, 2019, or is it? No, this year. Oh, this, this year? year yeah. yeah, won this year. Finally, so I ain't got to go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, everybody loves that place, but I absolutely hate it. Really? That's the only place that I really ever get nervous in a car, just because you're, I mean, it's, it's big, but it's not that big, but it's so flat and the way the racetrack, the way they prepare it, um, it's got that huge berm on the inside and it's normally ran, it's normally one right around the outside wall on the cushion, but always the cushion is not like a normal cushion. It's, uh, it's got a ditch to it. So your car always lays over on the right rear and your left front's in the air and at any time you can wreck. Like you're you're on the verge of disaster all the time there, mm -hmm. and uh, so I always um, I wouldn't even go this year. Like I was tired of it last year, and I, as much as we travel, I always get beat down. And when, when I get there, I don't like the place. I'm ready to go home. 
you know, I call Rachel and I'm like, I, I don't even want to be here, you know? And so, um, finally this year, just everything worked out and it was a crazy, crazy deal. We got rained out, we had to run during the day and, uh, but we ended up, uh, making the right calls and had to get up on the wheel finally because, uh, what, the way I, uh, would normally win the way I've, I've been running really good. Um, there we started, uh, you know, up front and fell back and then I had to come back to the front there, but we got up on the wheel and won the race. That's awesome. So now you're not going back. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that not, feather is in his cap. Yeah, not, not if I can help it. There, <laughs> not I if mean, I can help it. I, I'm not going to say never, but yeah. it, it, it's going to be uh, vacation time for the next couple of years <laughs> during September there. Uh, how big of a track is it? It's a half mile. Okay. It's a half mile, but it, it's flat. Um, used to be a lot, lot wider than it is now. They keep moving the inside berm in. I feel like they do. They keep telling me that it doesn't, but you can go back and, and look at Google pictures and it, the berm on the inside is almost bigger than the track now. So, um, Just with, with the late model way we race now, we, we knock such a huge hole in the air uh, that we got to have a lot of room getting in the corner to actually be able to race. And like if you if you try to enter behind somebody at the last second they turn left and if you're not immediately turning right or you know it's just uh it's just all an air game anymore is it really you guys oh 100 that, that much finally at the end of the year it blowed up so <laughs> it, it just made it just long enough uh to get us through the year but it was just kind of cool how we did it that's awesome it's a lot of good times that remind it kind of reminds me of a sponsor of yours mark martin automotive i've listened to his podcast and uh, listen to him talk about all the traveling he did and the trucks and his dad would buy a van and it would blow a motor um, and all kinds of, if you go back and listen to the years that he ran, yeah, he talks about building his own trailer. They build their own trailer and they'd buy a, a box van or something like that and it wouldn't be enough and it would blow the motor. And I, I heard you say one of your shops is in Batesville. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm guessing that's how you guys uh, became close with Mark. Uh, sure. Well, uh, yeah. So my, my car owner, Lance Landers and Mark Martin was, uh, partners in all the dealerships, all the Mark Martin dealerships, the Ford, Chevy, Dodge, GMC stores. So, uh, my race shop is actually right behind Mark Martin Ford, which is the Mark Martin museum. Okay. So yeah, my, my race shop sits up on the hill right there on the same grounds as the Ford store. Is Mark still in baseball or no, he, he, he lives in, Montana now. Okay. I was wondering if he in that camper, sir. And he keeps both well, wax mirror glass and clean. Glass clean. That's right. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I listened to his podcast today, uh, with him and uh, how he met uh, was Ray Dillon. Yeah. He started driving with him. That that was a good show. That was real good. Pretty cool. Mark's an interesting guy to talk to. Yeah. Man, he was my hero when he was coming up. I love Mark Martin. Listen All to his way, podcast is it's like very, the Forger's days. It's uh crazy to hear the stories of him and like Rusty on the road and they in a hotel parking lot rebuilding their cars or putting them back together kind of like y'all do now asphalt racing had had it was the big time back then that's what they all did pretty, pretty cool I like the car you done a couple of years back you know the, the Brewster Baker throwback that was, yeah that was, uh, pretty that was cool. sweet yeah that thing went over great I didn't I didn't I didn't know if anybody would really get it or whatever but um Man, it, it really turned out to be a big hit. You know, obviously, uh, 49, and uh, that's basically where my dad got that number from. 49 was the, the Brewster Baker movie, and uh, Bud Lunsford at the time was running really good around the southeast. So my dad used to be number A1, and then at that time he switched to 49, and that, that's where I picked it up. At. That movie had to come out when you was born. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably way before. I'm as young as he is. <laughs> No. What? We're hey, 80, I'm 83 too, so. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah we're good. Yeah, I, I figured that idea. Idea. when it came out. No, I don't either. Uh -huh. I don't Probably know. 79 or 80. That was it. Oh, okay. My time. I thought it was a cool paint scheme too. You got the internet right in front of you. Right. Check it out. Oh, Bruce, it out. my bad. Get, come oh, on. You got my bad. One time. Listen. Come on now. Jesus. I got the guy across from me telling me how to run our damn show already. <laughs> Somebody needs to. <laughs> well, you told me he can do that too. Up on yeah. <laughs> Brewster Baker, Kenny Rogers, 1982 six pack. See, I went far off. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, man, it's heavy. I'm wondering if we pull up, if, if you type in Brewster Baker, if, yeah, your car actually is the fourth picture that pops up. Oh, yeah. A picture of your car. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met Swifty uh, when I was driving, like I told you, for Ronnie Whitlock, which owned um, Team Ford of Marietta at the car dealership. Swifty was a paint my stint removal guy. Oh. Right there. And so really? he, he seen the old late model in the back of the Ford store with a 49 on it. So me and him got to talking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. That is really cool. That's neat. Swifty, is he, was he the one that was, uh, he was, uh, hold on, I'll look it up. Swifty. Oh, <laughs> I'll yeah. look. Yeah, well, um, the year uh, that you guys, I think it was that you won a bunch, when you started winning a bunch, there was all kinds of rumors that you guys had found some part. I know you got, you dirt lay my guys, you cover your cars up and nobody sees it. Like you got no. banners that go over the back sides and the tires and all that kind of stuff. Uh, is that just something an engineer's in the shop fool with one day? And it's like, yeah, we're going to try was, this. Uh, that, that was Kevin Rumley, um, 100%. He just, uh, they come up with something and then it, it's one of those deals where it took him four or five days to actually put it together. And once he put it together, I had to go over and kind of clean it up. Like Kevin's the brains, Kevin's does all the stuff, but I'm kind of the cleanup man. I had to go over there and like, you know, cut the bolts off, make it where it wouldn't, where it wouldn't hang up and, you know, just kind of, um, you know, clean it up. Pretty it so, up. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. To, so to speak, but just happened to be that year they outlawed covers. Um, on the cars. <laughs> yeah. Just so that yeah, just so happened that year they outlawed covers and we went down to uh we went down to Florida and uh yeah it was uh it, it was a big stink but uh we got we got to run it for a year but um it was just one of those deals that nobody else could figure it out really and uh we did and so they they outlawed us or they outlawed it uh the part that, that we that Kevin came up with and uh so that's just it was a just the start of getting us in this smaller box to keep to start the uh, creativity out of dirt lane mod racing at that point. Uh, is I, I mean, how big is y'all's rule book really? And uh, now it sounds like it may be pretty thick. Yeah, well, I I don't know that it's actually a book anymore. It's like anything else you pull it up on your phone or you can. Get well, it. yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, there's uh there's a lot of detailed stuff in there. You know, there's it, it's all red and gray there ain't a whole lot of gray any, or it's all red and black there ain't a whole lot of gray anymore but we'll, we'll still find those areas every now and then working yeah so the year you guys found that they didn't have covers were other guys trying it they just didn't they couldn't they didn't get it figured out like y'all did correct or? yeah you know i mean there was people hiring photographers to take pictures of our cars while i was going around the track and oh uh, man it was a there's a whole lot of stuff going on that year. That's it was, nuts. It, it, it was it was definitely fun, you know, and it <laughs> fun. Yeah, what it was, it, it was kind of cool that year because I mean Kevin designed that car, and uh, Kevin and Leroy built the engines that year. Uh, Kevin built the shocks. You know, we did everything in house. We didn't have outsourced anything, and we wasn't set up to run a national level a tour. We went to Florida and ran good, and then we we're like, well, hell, we'll go to the next race. And then we'll go to the next one. All right, well, we're going to go to Wheatland and see how it goes. Well, we went to Wheatland and won the show me. And so we just, uh, um, that year. With all this winning you've done in the Super Late Model, have, is it, have you ever gotten any uh, offers to drive a truck, a Xfinity car, cup car? I drove a truck one time. Mm -hmm. Went to Martinsville and attempted to make the show. Um, um, that was in 2012 or 13. 2013, which, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we was just, uh, I'll say not in great equipment. We was in good equipment, but, uh, just for the, for the trucks that was there and everybody was trying, you know, Martinsville is the hardest one to make because that's where everybody's trying to make their first race. Mm -hmm. Uh, we was just a few hundreds or thousands off of, of making the show. It snowed the day of. Oh yeah. And and so they had to you know it was and so i think we only was it was like seven or eight of us racing for two spots or qualifying for two spots oh wow uh, but we was we was third you know but we didn't make it in but uh it was a good experience i guess you know it was cool um but as far as anything else i just never got the opportunity i've had 
couple of people called me wanting to drive the at uh, Arca car at the, the dirt race they run, the yeah. mile race or whatever. I'm like, yeah, since it's you, you know, we'll do it for one hundred and fifty thousand. I'm like, is that what you're paying me? And I'm like, <laughs> right. You, you called me. I mean, <laughs> I'm used to people paying me to drive their stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm not paying y'all, so I, I don't have that kind of money. I'm yeah. Go drive an Arca car, so. Anyway, um, just uh, just never have got the opportunity. Or it hasn't worked out right. Really, man. I was I figured people be ringing your phone off the hook trying to get you. Hey, just come drive our car. The notoriety and I could, like we said at the beginning of the show, we we kind of put it out there that you were going to be on the show this week, and it blew up blew up our social media stuff. Um, you're very popular around here. That's got to make you feel good uh, to be in. You know the area that you're in that you're you're so well liked uh i haven't heard anybody have anything bad to say about you um over any of the years that you've been racing so um hats off to you for uh being a uh, role model for a lot of kids i'm sure you got kids come up to you every race you go to uh and uh want you to take pictures and autographs and stuff like that it's got to make you feel good yeah sure i mean that's what it's all about that's the future of our sport and uh i was a kid one day yeah you know and i've i've tried to uh you know obviously i'm not perfect nobody is but um i've tried to do things right and try not to burn any bridges on the way up and the majority of the people i've drove for i could probably go back and you know they'd probably lend me their shirt off their back um there's a few of them that might not but um uh, but I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just like anybody else. I ain't perfect, but I try to set a good example and uh, try to take time as much as I can with the kids and uh, with the fans because uh, that's what our sport's all about. If they're not there, we won't be there. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. That does mean a lot, and I'm sure it does for the fans to hear that. Uh, not everybody in your position, I, I would imagine, thinks that way, so it's pretty cool to hear. Um, man, we really appreciate you coming on here and uh, talking with us for a while. It's yeah. been pretty cool. It's been fun. It's been yeah. fun, no doubt. Yeah. What's your plans from like tonight on as far as racing? I mean, I mean, you're young, so I mean, we got another ten years, fifteen years in us. I don't know. I mean, I, I would think I do, but I don't know if I want. I, I don't want to do it the way I'm doing it for another ten or fifteen years. Um, I want to. Uh, there's still a couple goals I'd like to achieve. There's still some big races I'd like to win. Um, I've got such a great team, such a great sponsor, such a great car owner that you know I don't I don't want to give up um, on that. I right. want to continue on for them, obviously. But um, I still, you know, we I backed my schedule down this year from what I normally run, and uh, it was there's just so much good money out there right now. It you know it's. It's a double-edged sword on what we do. Yeah, it's, well, it's like any type of racing. If you're running good, you want to continue to run good yeah. and go get the money when you can if you're racing for a living. Mm -hmm. But if you're running bad, you want to continue to race to try to figure out what's wrong or you're not making enough money, so you got to keep going. So all in all, you, you continue to race more and more, however it goes. But um, I don't know what the future holds. Um, I know... I feel like I'm in pretty good status with, with my car owner. And he told me he's not quitting unless I quit. And I said, well, I'm not That's quitting, awesome. quitting unless you do. So <laughs> it, it, we in this for a long haul. Exactly. We'll be it, 70 years old still running. <laughs> old Red Farmer over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope not. I hope not. But, Sounds uh, like you said y'all's y'all do's and didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Yeah, no doubt. No, Lance, he, he's an awesome person. Yeah, we, we talk on the phone all the time, even though he's in Bates when I'm here. But. I don't know. We'll, we'll just see. Um, I don't want to run 80 races for the next, you know, in 10 years. You know, I'd, I'd still like to race. As long as I'm competitive, I'd like to race. And uh, I want to see my, my kid grow up. You know, I've already I've already missed enough of his life. But uh, I'd like to be there at a few more baseball games or football games than, than I have been in the first eight years. Any, any plans to get, get him in a car? He's ran a go-kart a couple times. Um He's doing okay with it. He's not, you know, kids are just different, I guess, these yeah, days. Mm -hmm. he, he's not into it like I used to be. Yeah, I, I would, if I had a go-kart sitting down there the way he does, I, I'd be down there, you know, 
every day wanting to, you know, pull on dad's pants leg and say, let's go. Let's go, let's stuff. go. Yeah, but, you know, he is his own person. He's a great kid for, for sure. Makes excellent grades, never gets in trouble. I try to push him to get in trouble every now and then just to <laughs> say he did, but no. Um, but whatever he wants to do, I'll be 100% supportive and whenever he wants to go race i got the stuff to go do it fortunately and uh, we'll go have some fun together I hear you.